Hey, hello everybody and welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishal. I hope you all are doing well. So in this video, I am going to discuss about that how you can acquire essential skills in data science and will become a data scientist in different product base and startup companies. So as you know, data science is, in, is, a, is a booming field and data scientists are in high demand in the job market in different product based and startup companies. So that's why there is a craze among the students regarding data science and all the students, they aspire to work in this field. But it's not a straightforward, quick process. I mean, it's a time consuming process and you have to follow a structured roadmap over a period of time and then only you will acquire the essential skills in data science and eventually you will become a data scientist. So in this video, I will be talking about that roadmap and I'll give you a structured uh, process to become a data scientist. Specifically, I'll cover that what are the courses that you have to take, what are the relevant courses, both fundamental and advanced level courses that you have to do, what are the course project and final year project that you need to choose, then which kind of internship that you have to do, what kind of placement strategy you should take during your placement, all of these things I am going to discuss in this video in detail so that you will have a rough idea that what are the steps that you have to follow during your undergraduate or master's day so that you will be skillful enough at the end of your B.Tech and M.Tech and you will become a data scientist in a reputed uh, product based companies or a startup company. So everything will be there in this video so if you want to know detail about it please stay tuned to this video till end and before starting the video as I always say if you like this video please hit the like button and if you are new to this uh, particular channel please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that when I upload a new video you will get instant notification. Without any delay let's get started into today's video. Now before starting the video I would like to clarify one thing that who all are data scientists. So typically data scientist is a person in a company who use statistics and machine learning algorithm to build model to solve different business uh, problems using the existing business data that is already available in the company. Now different company gives them different name of this role like Amazon calls it the applied scientist or applied researcher, Microsoft call them AI scientist, LinkedIn call them uh, applied research engineer. So different company has different name for this role but they all comes under this broad category of data scientist. Now let's talk about the actual topic of this video that what is a roadmap to become a data scientist. So the first step is that you need to know the fundamental mathematics part. So if you are someone who is serious to learn data science and its fundamental, you need to know or you need to study linear algebra and probability very well. Now how much mathematics is sufficient to you know ex excel in, in data science field. So if you are interested to work in applied part of machine learning or the analytical part of machine learning like natural language processing or applied computer vision, then a decent amount of probability and linear algebra knowledge will be sufficient. But if you are someone who is willing to work on theoretical machine learning like converse optimization or online learning, so if you are interested in these kind of topic, then a strong foundation in linear algebra and probability will be needed because as you know, if you want to work in theory part, you have to be very good in mathematics. Now if you are a B.Tech or M.Tech student based on your interest in, in either applied part or the theory part, you have to keep on studying linear algebra and probability and you have to be very comfortable in different terminologies that is there in linear algebra probability like different distributions, Gaussian distributions, then you know dimensionality, vector spaces, eigenvalue, eigenvector. So all of these terms you have to be very comfortable with because later whenever you will be dive into machine learning uh, subjects, these terms will keep on coming in different algorithms and you shouldn't be confused about these, these, these terms whenever you will be studying those machine learning algorithms. Now from where you will be studying these things, so if you are a B.Tech or M.Tech student, keep on creating courses related to linear algebra and probability and try to learn from there. And there are some many other online resources available to study linear algebra and probability. I won't be talking about them here because I've already made a couple of videos before where I have talked about uh, different resources I used to follow. The link I'll be given in the description, you can check those videos out and get the reference from there. Now the next step is that you need to do a couple of comprehensive courses on the fundamental machine learning and the advanced level machine learning. Now why I am asking to do these courses on fundamental and advanced level machine learning because these courses are very essential to understand the classical machine learning algorithms that is there in the literature for years. You need to understand the maths behind it and you need to build your intuition on top of that. Because whenever you will be dive into the advanced level topics like deep learning or any state of that models like uh, the stable diffusion or transformer then the knowledge of these classical machine learning algorithm will be helpful because 
somewhere on top of those classical machine learning approaches only uh, these advanced topics has been developed. So, that is why you need to learn those classical approaches very well. You need to know the whole mathematical derivation behind it and you need to have a very strong intuition on top of that. Even in today's world, there are many product based companies who still use those classical machine learning approaches and they are quite popular in the industry because you know those classical machine learning approaches they are very easy to implement and they are interpretable in nature. That means whatever output they gives you, they provide you an interpretation that why the output is like that and what is the relationship with, with the input. So that is why in the production of different product based companies, they prefer to use those classical machine learning approaches than deep learning model because deep learning models are kind of a black box, nobody knows what is happening inside. So that is why you know most of the product based companies uh, interview round during the placement both in on campus and off campus, they have a dedicated round where they check candidate skill set on those. Uh, those classical machine learning models and they check your mathematical foundation. I mean, they check whether you know how that model has been built and what are the maths behind it. So, that is why it is very important for you that you understand those models really, really well. You know the whole mathematical derivation so that you know whenever they will ask you in the interview, you can you know do well and crack the interview. Now, again from where you will be learning these machine learning concepts. So, if you are a BTEC student or MTech student, you can credit relevant courses from your in institution so that will be helpful for you. But again there are a lot of online resources available in the market, different lectures is there, different study materials, standard books, all of these are available and I think almost in all university they have some lecture uh, video available on YouTube so you can you can refer to them. Personally what I prefer or what are the references I used to follow to learn machine learning so that I have I have already discussed in those couple of videos which I made previously the link will be in the description you can go and check it out. The next step is that you need to learn deep learning very well. So as you know this era is of deep models or deep uh, learning models that is why you need to understand the basic architecture of different deep learning network like convolution neural network or CNN, recurrent neural network or RNN, transformers, attention genetic adversarial network or GANs, graph neural network or GNN. So, all of these models they are kind of the foundation of the recent state of the art model that is there in different areas. So, you need to understand very well this basic structure of or the basic architecture of different, uh, different models. Now, your prior knowledge about the classic machine learning uh, algorithms will now be helpful to understand these deep models. Now, from where you will be learning deep learning again you know if you are a BTEC student or MTEC student you can credit relevant courses uh, from your institution but in online again there are a lot of resources available I think in almost all institutions they have a deep learning uh, course and that is available online. But personally if you ask me uh, I, I, I refer uh, to this course by Professor Mithyas Khapra from IIT Madras. So his deep learning course is really really well because he is a very good teacher. So he teaches very well deep learning and this course is available in YouTube and in NPTEL. The link I will give in the description but I think almost all of you know about it because this course is very very popular. And the standard book that I used to follow is by uh, Ian Goodfellow and Joshua Benzio. So this book is also very very well written and very easy to e read. So I would recommend you that if you want to refer to any specific book for this so you can you can refer, refer to this particular book. The link of this book also I will give in the description. Now the next step is explore the advanced level topics. So once you are comfortable with the mathematics part, once you are comfortable with the classical machine learning algorithm and the deep models, now you should explore different specific areas where these deep models and machine learning algorithm, algorithms are being used. So for example, you can explore natural language processing, you can explore computer vision, you can explore graph machine learning, reinforcement learning. So there are many areas that you can explore now and I suggest for each of these areas try to take a course and explore as much as possible. Now while attending these different courses is very important that you analyze your interest and based on that you choose to further explore a specific area. So suppose you find that text part is very important for you then maybe natural language processing will be will be the field that you should further explore. Maybe images and image processing you are finding very interesting then maybe computer vision should be the area that you should explore or maybe you are in getting interested in graphs and networks then maybe graph neural network or graph machine learning is something that, that you should explore. So this decision is very important because based on this decision you will be choosing one area and you will further explore that area and that will actually build your career 
on that particular area to become a data scientist in future. One thing I have to mention here just to avoid confusion that if you are thinking that all of these steps which I have just mentioned you, you have to follow it sequentially. Like first you need to learn linear algebra probability, then you have to learn fundamental machine learning and advanced machine learning, then you need to learn deep learning and finally you have to move to any specific area of interest that not necessarily be done in sequential way. You can parallelly do it like whenever you are you know learning linear algebra probability you can start learning machine learning the fundamental machine learning then you can move to advanced level machine learning and at the same time you can start exploring deep learning models and finally once the all the prerequisite is done you can move to any specific area of interest so yeah this is how also you can you can you can learn it the next thing is that you have to learn python programming languages because python is the widely used programming languages in data science and machine learning community because there are many inbuilt libraries that is there in python which helps to analyze data visualize data and build different machine learning algorithms now if you have some prior experience in programming in different other languages like c c++ or java learning python won't be that much difficult for you because it's very easy to understand and use so you will easily cope up with python programming languages but if you're someone who has no prior programming experience i mean you didn't do any programming in any other languages before then i I'll, I'll recommend you that you start from very beginning and start learning python now there are a lot of tutorials available in online so you can refer one of them so i would suggest you that you you start learning from them and start practicing uh, from using very simple simple uh, problems and try to implement them uh, in, 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 in Python. Now, once the basic Python you know, then you can you can start exploring the advanced level uh, frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow, which will be actually helpful for you while you will be developing different deep neural network models. The next thing is that you should do some project on machine learning or data science, uh, because once you have uh, the understanding of different machine learning algorithms, different deep neural network models, and you have already explored uh, the related areas, it's very important that you should have some hands-on experiences. And implementing machine learning models is quite different than understanding them theoretically. There are a lot of challenges that is involved there because you need to collect data, you need to clean the data, uh, you have to tune different hyperparameters after building the model, you have to choose different performance metrics. So all of these things are there that you need to learn. And once you build a machine learning model end-to-end, -end, all of these things you will be learning and that will be helpful for your career. Now, if you are a BTEC and MTech students in different institutions, I would recommend you that whenever you will be creating a course, try to take a course where there are some course project involved in that course. So that, you know, whenever you'll be taking these machine learning courses, in that course only, you'll be, uh, you know, doing a part of part of project, a mini project kind of things related to that course. And as the course is related to machine learning, so from that uh, course project only, you'll be gaining some insight about uh, doing a project. And also as a part of your final year project like BTP or MTP, uh, you, 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 can, you, can, you can choose a professor who is working in machine learning so that you can work on a project which is related to machine learning or different specific areas. So that also will enhance your skill set and that will help you to have a hands-on experience while working in that project. The final step is placement and here you should have a very focused and well thought out strategy to become a data scientist. So first of all, uh, before the placement, if you are looking for some industry internship, then you should only focus on data science role so that you know you can join the company, work there on a real world problem statement for a couple of months and that experience will be now counted during your uh, placement scenario. So that's why you shouldn't look for any other role. You should, you should dedicatedly look for a data science role and if you are getting a data science role, then only you should uh, you know, go for it because your prior experience on machine learning is needed to get a good job in the, in the final placement. And suppose if you are not getting an industry internship and you are looking for an academic internship, then, al then also look for those research labs where they are actively doing research in machine learning and AI domain. So that you can go there, you can work with, with the students or uh, PhD students or maybe under, under supervision of some, some good professor there. And that will be again counted as experience of working in a real world uh, research problem in machine learning and that will be helpful for you during your placement. Finally, during placement also you have to be very focused and dedicated that you will only appear to those companies which are offering data science role. Now here something can happen that you might find that in your campus big companies are coming like Microsoft, Amazon, they are visiting but they are not offering data science role rather they are offering SD role. And maybe it might happen that they are offering huge package for this SD role. 
then also you shouldn't be tempted uh, for going into SD role. You should resist your temptation because if your goal is to become a data scientist, then you should only apply to those companies who is offering data science role. Because once you join a company as a SD role, your chance of getting back into a data science role is now getting reduced because you will start working in these companies as a SD role. You will start you know, having hands-on experience on developing different softwares, then your experience of machine learning is kind of gone. So that's why I would suggest you that even if you are not getting offers from good companies from as, as a data science role, try to try to see what are the other offers is coming from other companies. Maybe startups, uh, they are offering a lot of data science role in your campus. Then try to get into a startup. Then, you know, start working there as a data scientist for a few years. And after a few years, once you have a lot of experience in, in, a, in a specific area, uh, working in a real world uh, problem, then obviously after a couple of years, you can switch back to these big companies and, and you, you can start working uh, with them. So that's why this strategy you have to follow that you will only choose the company who is offering data science, data scientist profile. Yeah, so that's the complete roadmap to become a data scientist. And as I said you in the very beginning that it's not a straightforward job, it's not an easy job. You need to put a lot of time and effort to acquire all of those skill set, all of those, you know, knowledges and experience around data science. And then only you will be able to be a data scientist in any product based companies, because these product based companies, they will test your all the knowledges and then only they will select you for that role because these roles typically they are high paid jobs. So that's why you have to go through a rigorous interview process and then only you will be selected for becoming a data scientist. But yeah, in this process of being a data scientist, when you are, you will be learning different skill set, you need to be very patient and you need to show perseverance and persistence so that you acquire all the knowledges, all the skill set, which is required for, for becoming a data scientist. And at the end of the, uh, end of the process, whenever the placement session will be happening, you will do well in the interview and you will be able to, uh, you know, showcase your skill set and become a data scientist. So that's why if you are really willing to be a data scientist and willing to put a lot of effort to follow this roadmap, you will definitely be uh, succeeded to build your career uh, as, as a data scientist. So yeah, that's it about this video. I hope this detailed roadmap will be helpful for you. And my best wishes for all of you who are kind of a final year BTEC student or who have just started their MTech so that they can follow this uh, roadmap and become a data scientist in, in, in future in any of the product based companies. Yeah, so that's it. If you have liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know if you have any comments or query in the comment section so that I can answer them. And if you are new to this particular channel, I request you to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video of this kind, you will get instant notification. That's it about this video. I'll be meeting in the next video. Until then, bye.